Hello everybody. In this lecture, we will be talking about syphilis, which can also be pronounced as syphilis, which is another deadly sexually transmitted disease in human beings, which is caused by a bacteria. So for the introduction, syphilis is a bacterial infection that is uh, usually transmitted sexually. And uh, the causative organism for this disease is what we call as the treponema pallidum. Syphilis starts as a painless sore, typically on the genitals, rectum or the mouth. And uh, it spreads from person to person via skin or the mucus uh, membranes along uh, like you know that are located around this uh, particular regions of uh, where the sore has begun. The causative organism uh, Treponema pallidum is generally a spirochete kind of bacteria that is you know spirally shaped, gram negative, motile and it belongs to the subspecies pallidum. So now getting on to the clinical manifestations of uh, syphilis. The triponemes or the syphilis causing pathogens can cause a diverse range of clinical manifestations in the host and they are categorically classified into acquired venereal syphilis which has uh, three different stages that is the primary, secondary and the tertiary, tertiary stage and uh, there is this congenital syphilis which is an infection that occurs during pregnancy and finally the non-venereal uh, treponematosis uh, which uh, can be classified as uh, yaws, penta or endemic syphilis which is generally present on the skin or the mucous membrane. So this primary stage the acquired venereal syphilis initially begins as a genital tract lesion whereas the secondary stage uh, would involve disseminated lesions across the body. Meanwhile the tertiary stage would cause approximately uh, would, would occur in approximately one third of the untreated individuals and result in cardiovascular and uh, neurologic problems. The congenital syphilis as I told you is majorly an infection during pregnancy and it results in fetal death or birth defects. Now moving on to the classification and antigenic types of uh, syphilis. Syphilis is purely classified based on the clinical manifestations that are observed and uh, based on this the kind of pathogen subspecies that is involved in making these manifestations occur are also regarded. The Triponema pallidum subspecies pallidum is known to cause the venereal syphilis whereas the Triponema pallidum subspecies pertunium causes the disease EOS. Meanwhile, Triponema pallidum subspecies endemicum causes endemic syphilis and finally a different species altogether Triponema caracium causes penta and when we say a venereal syphilis or a venereal disease it is usually transmitted by sexual contact whereas the other diseases that are considered non-venereal are the ones that are transmitted by non-sexual contact only. So now talking about the morphology of uh, the pathogen, Treponema pallidum is a gram-negative 
pathogen that is negatively uh, i mean that is difficult to stain and it is a helical rod like structure having tight and regular as well as irregular spirals as you can see here in this diagram this looks like a spring this pathogen and uh, the kind of spiral that is observed may be regular equidistant or they may be irregular these pathogens are usually of uh, 0.1 to 0.4 micrometers by uh, 5 to 20 micrometers uh, in diameter and length and they can move by the rotational movement with the help of a periplasmic flagellum sometimes if they are cultured in a on a liquid media the treponema species we also have a translational movement to travel around and as far as the capsules are concerned these uh, bacteria have uh, intracytoplasmic tubules along them and uh, they do not produce any kind of spores altogether for the cultural characteristics these bacterial colonies can be visualized microscopically where they appear to be white colonies with metabolic uh, properties being strictly anaerobic or uh, microaerophilic and sometimes they are also chemo organotrophic where they utilize a variety of uh, carbohydrates and amino acids as their source of carbon and energy the treponema species are generally found in the oral cavity intestinal tract rumen and genital areas of humans as well as animals and they are distributed worldwide and still remain a major public health problem in an event to culture uh, this particular uh, pathogen for culturing three subspecies that are uh, treponema pallidum uh, treponema caratium and uh, treponema paralus cunei they have not been successfully cultured till date there is no particular media on which they can be successfully cultured whereas all the other species can be isolated from mixed cultures by the membrane technique on the serum or rumen agar and then subcultured in a pre reduced broth and uh, for storage or maintenance they can be stored in uh, 10% uh, glycerol or dmso at minus 70 degrees celsius and sometimes uh, you can also lyophilize them or uh, freeze dry them with uh, skimmed milk to preserve them for a longer period the incubation of uh, treponema species is generally uh, carried out at 37 degrees celsius for 1 to 2 weeks in an aerobic or microaerophilic atmosphere with regard to the pathogenesis and uh, host defenses of syphilis the treponemes are highly invasive uh, pathogens that can often disseminate very soon immediately after inoculation so in order to evade the host immune responses they have a unique structure of uh, the treponemal outer membrane meaning that there are very low or very little surface proteins that are exposed so the host immune cells cannot detect this particular pathogen due to limited exposure of surface proteins and this is the main reason why even today we do not have a vaccine for 
syphilis. Also, since uh, you know there is no classical uh, lipopolis saccharide or uh, uh, endotoxic uh, layer outside the pathogen, there are numerous or very large amounts of lipoproteins present and these lipoproteins have that capacity to induce inflammatory process in the host. And both the cellular or the morphological as well as the humoral uh, processes of the host cells, host immune cells contribute to the host defense against a treponemal infection. And uh, in any such case, the white blood cells called macrophages eat up these bacteria by a process called phagocytosis to clear them off the system. So now coming to the clinical symptoms of uh, syphilis, syphilis is a kind of disease that develops in stages and there are a variety of infections or uh, sorry variety of symptoms that occur across the stages. Sometimes like you know a syphilis infection may not necessarily be noticed for years together. And in any case, uh, you know, talking about a primary syphilis infection, this is the first sign of syphilis inoculation into the, or sorry, the treponema pallidum inoculation into the host system. And here what happens is a very small sore, as you can see in this diagram, or uh, in these figures, a very small sore or a boil kind of a, disruption occurs in the skin it is called a shankur okay it is uh, spelled as c-h-a-n-c-r-e but pronounced as shankur and this can appear at the point where the bacteria enters the body and in most of the cases there is only one shankur that is formed and usually it develops about three weeks after exposure to the pathogen it will be painless and it can also be hidden within the vagina or the rectum. And in order to self heal or in order to uh, let the host defense system act upon this and uh, heal the particular uh, shankur, it takes about three to six weeks. And now within a few weeks of shankur healing, the secondary syphilis uh, symptoms start to appear and they are categorized by rashes on the trunk that is the chest uh, and uh, abdomen region and then eventually spreading on to the entire body palms and feet with no itchiness and they are also accompanied by wart like sores in the mouth and genital area so when we talk about warts you can observe these uh, diagrams here where there are bigger uh, dermatological disruptions occurring on the body and uh, this again may last for a few weeks and uh, also come back again after a year or something. Then we have the latent syphilis which occurs if uh, the primary or uh, secondary syphilis is uh, untreated and it is called the latent or hidden stage because there are no symptoms that are observed for years together. Sometimes uh, you know after a few years like you know the sign signs and symptoms may be lost or uh, they may reoccur to progress into the third or tertiary stage and here about 15 to 30 percent of untreated cases 
are cat- characterized by uh, damage in the brain that is called neurosyphilis or uh, problem with the eyes that is called ocular syphilis a problem with the heart better known as cardiovascular syphilis problem with blood vessels called uh, syphilitic hepatitis problem with the liver known as uh, syphilit- syphilitic uh, hepatitis or hostiaitis better known as problem with the bones next we have congenital syphilis which is an infection through the placenta or during birth there are usually no symptoms observed during this particular uh, event but it is characterized by rashes on on palms and feet in very rare cases and uh, eventually it develops into deafness teeth deformities or saddle nose or syphilitic rhinitis where the segmentation in the nose is absent sometimes there there can be a premature uh, baby a stillborn uh, baby or a baby that is uh, dead at the time of delivery or it may as well die immediately after birth syphilis can be diagnosed by testing of samples there are two kinds of samples that can be tested here first one is blood second one is cerebral spinal fluid blood test is carried out to confirm the presence of antibodies that have been fighting against the treponema pallidum infection and these antibodies can remain in the body for uh, you know a longer period for many years and thereby if you carry out a blood test for syphilis it may be either to determine a current infection or the infection of a past and in the case of a tertiary uh, stage infection if the patient is suspected to have neurological complications that are uh, associated with uh, syphilis that is called the neurosyphilis if the patient has neurosyphilis a sample of the csf or the cerebro spinal fluid can be collected by a procedure known as the lumbar puncture or spinal tap for the identification of pathogens as far as the treatment of syphilis is concerned there are no vaccines available i told you earlier there are no vaccines available for syphilis and the main reason for that is due to lack of exposure to the surface proteins and uh, thereby leaving us with only medication uh, as an option once this uh, disease has been uh, diagnosed so if this disease is diagnosed and treated in early stages it is very easy to cure and the only medication that is suggested globally is penicillin which is a preferred treatment for all the stages and in a case where the patient is allergic to penicillin an alternative antibiotic can be provided or there can be an alternative approach where penicillin desensitization may be recommended so what happens in penicillin desensitization is that the patient is given with certain drugs that will make him or her less sensitive to penicillin so they will not have an allergic reaction if they are given a penicillin shot also like uh, usually like only one uh, injection of penicillin is uh, suggested for any stage of uh, syphilis but if this disease is there for longer than a year then more than one shot of penicillin may be suggested and when this uh, disease is treated ala you know on the first day of treatment there is a reaction that our body provides and that is called uh, jarrett's uh, erexamer reaction 
which is characterized by fever, chills, nausea, body pain, and a headache. And this usually is a very small uh, complication that lasts for one day. Apart from medication of uh, medication for syphilis, a follow-up is also very much very much essential, where periodic blood tests are conducted in order to analyze the response to the penicillin treatment and also sexual contact with new partners must be avoided at least until the treatment is completed and the blood tests indicate negative. Moreover, it is very important to notify uh, the current sex partners that you have for uh, you know the patient has been uh, tested with syphilis so that even they can get any treatment if necessary this is a very important preventive measure also finally the patient must always be tested for an HIV infection while being diagnosed or treated for syphilis so with this I would like to conclude uh, today's lecture if you have any doubts you can always contact me via this email id thank you all